and welcome back to another episode with Atia. How are we doing today? How are we feeling? And let's get right into it, okay? So as you can see from the title, what we're talking about is cheating being normalized. You know, is cheating now today in 2023 or the 21st century a normal thing for relationships and how that can impact you know their relationships now and future relationships so let's get right into it but before we get too deep into the video you know we have to say our affirmations and today's affirmation will be my potential is limitless and i'm capable of achieving greatness so let's say it again my potential is limitless and i am capable of achieving greatness now let's get right into it so I wanted to talk about this because a lot of times today you do see, you know, a lot of cheating going on. Everybody just be doing their own little thing, whether they single or in a relationship. And me personally, I feel like if you're going to cheat, then just be single, right? But what is cheating, right? And even in the sense of what is cheating, I'm not going. I'm not going to give you guys a definition of cheating. We're not even going to look into the textbook definition of cheating. There are, of course, many different ways and different levels of cheating. I want people to discover what is cheating to them, right? What is cheating to you? What does it look like to you? Because, you know, someone who, you know, like I said, there's different levels of cheating. So let's say, for example, someone who is probably flirting with through text with someone else that they shouldn't be flirting with opposed to sleeping with another person someone might view that as the same level of cheating or someone might view that as the texting is just a very low level of cheating and um you know sleeping with someone is a very high level of cheating um, like I said, opposed to someone who's just probably going to view that just is it's the same level of cheating altogether, which it could be very high level of cheating or very low level of cheating. You personally never know. So what is cheating to us, right? To me, cheating, for me, for me, from my perspective, cheating is anything that you're trying to hide from me. Okay. If you, if you got to hide it, if I, if I can't know what it is, you know what I'm saying? Then you cheating plain and simple plain and simple now do i believe there's different levels of cheating of course you sleeping with somebody and you texting somebody is two different levels you know what i'm saying but at the same time though you could be in a situation where you know someone can cheat physically or they can cheat with somebody else emotionally by you know emotionally connecting with somebody else or mentally connecting with somebody else and being more spiritually connected to them from within versus ever physically being with them so you really have to define what is cheating to you right and i feel like when you are in a relationship it's conversations like this that should be had before you even get in a relationship with a person that you know you are designed to be with you should have that conversation of okay what does cheating look like to one another i feel like i'm saying cheating a lot what does that look like to us you know um what do you even expect from me as a partner what are some things that you just would not be comfortable with me doing what are some things that is like if i do this this is crossing the line and we're done what are the boundaries in this relationship i feel like things like that when it comes to relationships as far as communication people don't have those conversations because it can be very vulnerable to have those conversations you know and it's not easy to be vulnerable with people even people that you are in relationships with you would be surprised how many people are in relationships and they are not vulnerable with each other they actually outsource their vulnerability and sometimes they outsource their vulnerability it doesn't have to be to a another person that they find attractive but it could be to a friend a family member they would have issues with their partner and they will talk to everyone else around the world except their partner first you should always talk to your partner first just my suggestion okay now even as far as if nor if cheating was becoming normal right let's say we were to normalize cheating because we say you know everyone cheats you know everyone has been cheated on and it's something that's just and some people say it's something that's very inevitable and it's gonna happen anyway and i don't agree with that you know what i'm saying Personally, me, I feel like if you are with somebody and if they want things to work out with you and if they don't want to cheat on you, they will not cheat on you. Cheating is always a choice. It is never, ever 
ever an accident. It's never a mistake. You know, there are always things that lead up to any types, any way, shape, or form of cheating. There's always things that lead up to that. It's never something that you just open your eyes and it's in and happen. You know, so at the end of the day, it's always a choice. And when someone cheats, they have chosen to cheat on you. End of discussion. Okay. End of discussion. But let's say if we were to say, hey, cheating is normalized. Everyone chooses to cheat on their partner. Everyone chooses to be disloyal at one point. Everyone chooses to betray someone trust at one point because it's something that's inevitable. Let's say we're going to, let's say, let's say that's a thing, right? what are the consequences of those actions of making cheating normalized right well for one when you are cheating on someone you are breaking their trust that's very obvious right and trust is already hard to build after you have broken someone's trust and their someone's trust and they have given to given it to you like even for me for instance right i'm a person that right out the gate i already trust you to a certain extent unless you give me any reason not to and so let's say hypothetically we are in a relationship and i give you my trust i've obviously given you my trust to be in a relationship with you you know trusting that you will be committed to me trusting that you know you will be here for me physically mentally emotionally we will be here for each other we, we would be a team i would hope and pray that if we are in a relationship it is with someone who is a partner of ours that we you know envision you know just being a team you know it's, it's the two of us in this together it's not it's not a one-sided thing right so i'm trusting that we're going to be partners and that we're going to be in this thing together and if you break my trust well it's like well how can i trust my partner right and i feel like even as far as breaking trust it can actually affect both ends right because on the cheaters end for one if you if they really do care about their partner they're going to feel guilt they're going to feel shame and a lot of times what i even see in relationships and a lot of dynamics is when people do cheat it even takes them a while to come to the realization of what they have done because they are first of all like i said feeling shame and guilt and then also that fear of rejection is starting to come into play right because if your partner if your partner doesn't know that you cheated right and you know that they found out that they that you did cheat i'm pretty sure they're going to either want to leave they're going to want to cry they're going to be hurt they're gonna they're going to begin to reject you because what because you have broken the trust obviously and if you really care about someone a lot of times if you when you are in a relationship you have to think about both parties emotions and feelings so i can't imagine me caring about someone so much so and I cheat on them and that hurts me as well which is another reason why you wouldn't even want your partner to find out right because you don't even want them to get hurt but you did hurt them you know like cheating on someone betraying their trust that is going to hurt anybody who actually really cares about you in an intimate you know way emotionally physically mentally whatever way that it may be that you guys have a connection to where you are in a relationship it's going to hurt plain and simple so like even going to the point of you know breaking trust how can you now have a healthy relationship when you have not broken someone's trust because everyone knows how it is when you break somebody's trust now they're constantly questioning you they constantly know want to know where you are you're con if you're if somebody like me you should know somebody like me you cheat on somebody like me you're gonna be doing a lot of groveling a lot of it a lot of apologizing a lot of a lot of gift giving and even then I'm probably still gonna be like, get the hell out of my face, but I'll take the gifts though. You know what I mean? Like, it really depends. Like, like even me, for instance, I'm not the person to like really take somebody back after they cheated. I feel like the only way I would actually be in a dynamic that maybe I would take them back is if we are married. Because then that's different. I feel like marriages is 100% different. But, you know, the only reason why I say that I think it's different is because there's paperwork involved. That's the only reason why. In a marriage, when there's paperwork involved, you just can't wash your hands, walk out, and be done. You know what I'm saying? And if there's kids involved, yes, the dynamic of the situation can change. But just in the dynamic of a boyfriend and girlfriend situation, no children, you're out of here. Plain and simple, right? Because how can we not have a healthy relationship, a healthy dynamic, you know, when you have cheated? It makes, and I'm not saying it's impossible, but it makes it 10 times harder to now have a healthy relationship with somebody 
that you have now cheated on that has to constantly question your integrity you know and in like even in a sense of if you cheat on your partner that says a lot about your integrity it says a lot about your character it just says a lot about you know who you are as a person because are you really considered a team player if you are willing to cheat on your partner are you really a team player but at the end of the day we always like i said cheating is a choice and you always have a choice to break things off if you feel like something is not working for you and you want to go play outside elsewhere be a grown adult and speak your mind speak your truth and if you don't want to be with somebody then don't, 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 then don't be with them you know so anyways as i even said right like when you cheat on somebody it makes them question you constantly because they're gonna have the constant fear of you being tempted to cheat you know which imagine how how that makes a person feel just like the anxiety the 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 wonder the stress level that a person would have to go through because they're afraid that every time the person that they care about they have to worry about whether they're going to cheat on them or not whether they're going to cheat on them or not nobody got time for that okay like just imagine what this does down the long run i've never seen cheating have a healthy outcome you know what i'm saying like i've never seen cheating have a a great outcome in the end and even bringing it back to you know your morals and your integrity like it just shows your dishonesty it just shows where your prioritization is it just shows how you feel about a person when you are not around them you know how you're not even thinking about them or considering them when they're you know not with you and I think that's the most important part about having someone on your team even if you have a business partner or your family members or your friends you wouldn't want friends or family who are going to allow you to be talked about in a way that is discrediting to you when you're not in the room or you know someone who's just gonna lie to you because they want to or they're gonna talk about you behind your back it it, it goes the same way for if you are in a serious committed relationship because it's like any other relationship just a lot more intimate you know like you would want somebody around you that has the integrity to respect you when you are not in the room plain and simple it's like imagine how that trickles down for generations right so if you are growing up in a household where cheating is normal for one when kids see that especially i feel like males when men see that they have parents who normalize cheating nine times out of ten they grow up to be serial cheaters and sometimes if men even witness having a mother who always are constantly dishonest to men constantly using men um just like constantly portraying people just in general they will likely grow up to hate women and be misogynist literally and they will go after women who have more likely daddy issues that haven't had a real male authority figure because maybe they've never even the on the woman's side they've never even witnessed their parents be together due to a lot of infidelity involved and it's like imagine how that child then grows up to then believe that they can't trust anyone because they've never even witnessed their parents in a healthy i be repeating myself child in these videos in a healthy relationship or dynamic to where they feel like people are trustworthy you know so like imagine how that affects them in their relationships you know like i think a lot of times what people don't do is really think far ahead down the line and not even saying like and this is not even me saying like you know like like it's not even me saying that cheating is a bad thing or that it's a good thing what i'm saying is is think about the cause and effects of things because everything that you do whether you notice it or not whether you believe it or not has a cause and effect period every single decision that you make has a cause and effect either in your life or someone else's life you have to understand that and i think once people understand that not to say that you know take life so serious to where like you're literally watching your every single move and you're trying to figure out what is the cause and effect of every single little thing that you do i'm not saying do that because you can't even do that you know but what i'm saying is be a little more mindful you know be a little more open to every every single little possibility and the decisions that you make you know just be a little more open about the things that you do with yourself like you know just just like before you make 
certain rash decisions, you know, just think about it and be like, hmm, like, how can this really play out, you know, if I was to do this, you know, because I feel like us being human beings, we're so emotional. We have all these different emotions that come from left and right, whether we're upset, whether we're upset, sad or happy, frustrated, excited or embarrassed or you know, all these different types of emotions that come in and out throughout the day, depending on what is going on throughout our lives, that we have a tendency of, you know, being a little impulsive based off how we're feeling in the moment and not thinking about how we might feel tomorrow, you know, because the same way that you felt today, you're probably not going to feel that way tomorrow. So you make decisions based on how you feel today and then tomorrow you feel another way and then you're like damn maybe i shouldn't have made that decision yesterday but yesterday has already passed and it's already gone but maybe if you would have thought about for a second how you felt when you felt that way yesterday and thought hmm why am i feeling this way right now where are these emotions coming from do i really want to make that decision am i even going to feel this way tomorrow and be happy with that decision i feel like sometimes even when it comes to decisions like cheating maybe we should have those thoughts before we make certain decisions when it comes to playing with other people's emotions because even playing with other people's emotions it can be very 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 dangerous you don't know who you're playing with sometimes and you can set your own fate i'm just being honest with you a lot of times what we don't even realize that we do in our lives is that we literally create our own enemies you don't see it a lot of times and you probably won't see it until, you know, later down the line in the future. But a lot of times, depending on how we treat people, you know, how we speak to people, you know, just how we interact with others, we literally create our own enemies and our own fate with people. And sometimes, depending on who we are and how we act, it is not always the best. I'm just saying. So, that being said should we make cheating normalized i even try to look up some positive things that if, if cheating was to be normalized and um i really don't i really don't see any positive ways around it right and even in the sense of like if you are a person who you know you want to be with multiple women because i've you know i'm speaking to a lot i've spoken to a lot of people before and i interact with a lot of people i put myself through a lot of different experiences just so i can you know i like to get a full circle picture of things and i even understand why men cheat sometimes and why they want to have their options open and why they want to be like a ladies man and there are a lot of beautiful women out there there are there's a lot of beautiful women out there i'm not gonna lie but are they all good for you are they all good for your your mental health your growth your whatever depending on what your goals are in life if your goals are in life is just chasing after tail all day and you don't really care where it gets you whether it's good or bad cool that's different you know what i'm saying but even if that's the case don't i don't think you should put yourself in a situation where you're kind of leading somebody on making them feel like you know it's one thing that it isn't you know be very transparent about what you want out of life including in your relationships there's nothing wrong with you wanting what you want if you even a woman if you want three boyfriends cool that's all right as a male if you want two women cool that's okay i really hate the i even hate the saying or when people try to be like oh um oh well i'm, I'm not gonna say that because because they don't want that they don't want that you don't know what people want okay and it's wrong for you to make the decision for somebody else because you're trying to be in control of the situation. And I think that's what a lot of people do. When you cheat, you lie, you're very, you know, dishonest about what you want and who you are. You are trying to make decisions for other people so that you have more control of the situation so that you can really have your cake and eat it too. And that cake bites you in the ass. You never know what's in that cake, baby. When that cake is poisonous, you never know. You never know. You never even know who's baking the cake. You know what I mean? There's a lot of other points too that I can talk about um, if cheating wants to be normalized, but this video is already long enough, so I'm going to let you guys go here, okay? I love you guys, and I appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode with me, and i see you next time. Bye. Bye.